So, everybody say thank you to Crap. Because Crap went through and gathered up what appears to be about 102 questions from chat. For those who don't know, in the next few days, loot boxes are going to open on their own. So, I want to open up my loot boxes before then. But I didn't just want to sit here and open them because that's kind of boring. So I figured I'd do an AMA. Anyways, though, chat. Welcome into the AMA. Um, we got Blackthorn Blade, whose question is. So I don't know if you've ever answered this before in one of your many amazing videos, but what made you decide playing Reinhardt over other main tanks and over and other main tanks trying to play off tanks like Diva and Zarya. So I have a video about all this on my second channel, Futz 2, uh, talking about all the things that I did when I first swapped over to Overwatch. So I used to play competitive Siege, um, then I got into Overwatch, climbed through on console, got to GM on DPS, but I got to PC, many, 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 many years of console DPS did not transfer over well. I couldn't really keep up with many other people. I was hard stuck, like high diamond, low masters. And one of my friends, who's well, he was a support player, he was climbing towards GM because it was the same role and mechanics had kind of transferred over. And we were doing some scrimming and whatnot. And uh, this team that we were looking at, like talking to or whatever, they needed a main tank player. And I had always been someone who tried to fill in games. I ended up trying a little bit of main tank and I got hard egoed by the owner of the team. I didn't even really play the role. And he was just kind of like talking down to me and telling me like, you know, oh, you don't know what you're doing, all this stuff. And I was like, okay, like I, I'm here to like, kind of like, this is like my first time, honestly, like. And so he hard egoed me and I got pretty annoyed. Um, but they had like an A team and a B, B team. And then I grinded tank for like three weeks, got real fucking good at it. And then uh, we started slapping the A team and I was like leading the charge a lot of time. And um, I just started MTD. MTD this guy is so hard. And I won't lie, I, that feeling that high was unbelievably strong. And I kept playing it and I climbed to GM. And then I got a second account to just make sure it wasn't a fluke. Got that to GM and kept going. And so before I knew it, I was into like 44K, 41, 42, 4300. And going back to DPS was kind of a little tough at that point, so I just stuck with it. And plus, it was very easy because nobody played main tank, so I didn't have to worry about getting into games and not being able to play my role, because most players were either DPS support or off tank players. Has streaming slash content creation not worked out? What is something you would have liked to pursue? Um, I probably would have went into business more. Uh, I mean. I would, so for those who don't know, I used to work in Overwatch League. I worked for the Uprising uh, as their community coordinator in their front office. I worked in the Foxborough office instead of in LA. Was into Overwatch. I knew tons about esports. I was like very good at my job. Uh, but basically, my job then divulged into explaining esports to old boomers, and then they started to ask me things that were genuinely impossible, uh, like forcing colleges to make esports programs with no budget, no incentive. Uh, and I was like, that's just unrealistic. Like, y you can tell them why it's good, but like, I, I'm i gonna get scaled and graded off of them, their decisions, that makes no sense. Uh, more or less, I felt like I was kind of getting forced out. How do you uh, but if I had to do something different, I would've probably went down finances or marketing. Uh, kind of, I have a really good understanding kind of of how you should try to market to an audience. Actually, that's really what my content's kind of been. I don't really hard grind streaming anymore. At least like I used to when I was first starting out because I realized streaming is much more the marketing end than actually hard grinding, especially when you're starting. So, that's probably the route what I would have went. Uh, what is your next big goal in streaming slash YouTube? Um... My next big goal is to push how high I can go in Overwatch 2. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, during the drops event, I hit like 35,000 viewers, but it's a drops event. But the biggest crusher for me in Overwatch 1 has been... Um, I've never been able to be a 1k Andy. 
Like every time I, be, I started averaging a thousand viewers, something happened and the community shrunk even smaller. Like, I, I don't know how to describe this to you, but it's like, I've had this feeling for a long time where I keep getting pushed back in a box, um, where I feel like I could push higher, but the community gets smaller and smaller. And I see at the top, I see like Emong, I see Jay, I see ML, Super, Hard Blue. I see their viewership comes down too. It's like the top, the ceiling's crunching down. So I've always been kind of chasing this and um, like obviously numbers aren't everything, but it is a little disheartening to like feel like you're putting a lot of effort into something and not seeing a whole lot of a return. Do yourself, okay, next question. Do you see yourself playing other roles in a rush too? Uh, yeah, 100%. I'll still play like a lot of tank, mostly. That'll be my brand. Um, but I will probably play a lot of uh, DPS and uh, support because Emong and I are still going to want to duo, which is the next question. Are you and Emong going to still duo or alternate tank? Uh, I don't think Emong's going to really want to play other roles, so it's probably going to be up to me to learn other roles more. Um, but uh, support, I don't think, is that tough. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's hard to get to a level like ML, but I think being a serviceable support serviceable support player where I play like Brig, Bap, or Honor or Mercy, I think I can absolutely do that with very little very little struggle. Sorry, I shouldn't say very little struggle. It'll definitely be a struggle, but uh, it'd be much different than trying to hard grind DPS. You know, like I'm pretty sure I can play Brig a lot better than I can play, I don't know, Tracer. Uh, what are the games you play other than Overwatch? Uh, at the moment, I'm not really playing a whole lot. Uh, I play Apex every once in a while. I was playing it for a bit with, like, Seagull and Jay and whatnot, and we got Emong into Diamond. Um, I used to play a lot of Tarkov off-stream. I don't do that much anymore. I most play most of my games on-stream now. Uh, my off-stream time is much more, uh, dedicated me time, whether it's, like, watching TV, watching animes, you know, going over for walks, you know, whatever it might be. Like, I try to make it, like, disconnect time um and i think whenever i get a new place and i get a place to myself and i can have an office or a stream room that's away from my bedroom i'll be better about a work-life balance um but yeah for right now there's not anything that really interests me do you watch any of sports if so what teams i used to be a huge 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 sports fanatic football baseball basketball hockey you name it uh not so much ever anymore uh, ever since covid i don't really watch it as much don't know why. Just doesn't really speak to me nearly as much as it used to. Uh, whenever I get myself a nice place, I'd like to have a nice, like, almost man cave, living rooms, etc., and watch sports on Sunday. I think that genuinely would be kind of nice. Uh, but I'm honestly not that interested at this very moment. This is a long one, so I'm going to stay on this tab for a sec. How do you think a game like Overwatch should move forward in being accessible to new players uh, while we're keeping core audience entertained? I have played mostly fighting games, and this is a heavily discussed topic, especially to someone, uh, something as seemingly complex as fighting games are. Interesting differences, uh, interesting to see there's differences between genres. Um, that's a, that's a pretty good question, honestly. Uh, the simple answer to that is we need more content. New content brings and drives new players. Apex has kind of proved that, even with its older player base still being very good at the game. And a lot of the older player base complains about a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm slightly of the opinion that even Overwatch 1 could have been saved if we never stopped the content trickle. Uh, however, it seems that there was other circumstances to why it was getting tougher. And I still do think that 5v5 is the right call. Um, but in an ideal world, con content flow and having more content saves just about any game. Uh, which hero do you find the most annoying to deal with and why, uh, Brig? Uh, which hero do you find the hardest to play? Not necessarily the hardest to play for most people. Who do I find the most hard to play? Um, I would play, I'd probably say a lot of the DPS heroes, um, to a really, really high level, but if you're talking specifically just tanks, uh, probably Sigma. Sigma's probably the hardest for me to play, uh, because one, I don't get to practice it very often, uh, and two, it shoot. If the style in which you shoot is very different. So, have you played any tabletop games recently? No. Unfortunately, I have not. You only listen to one song for the rest of your life. Which do you pick? Uh, can never pick that. Too tough. And plus, I'd probably go crazy because I'm not someone who likes one song for too long. Same thing with foods. What's your favorite movie? Not a big movie guy, honestly. I just watched Top Gun and Top Gun Maverick on my trip back from LA. And uh, they were like, I, they weren't like that great. Not a big movies guy. Uh, Fox, do you have any flaws in the ranked competitive scene that you think we changed or tweaked? What is your take on 5v5? 5v5 
I think is a better dynamic for the game. Tanks need to be stronger individually, so you feel like the tank player feels like he's having more impact, and it's more fun, which is why tank queue times went up crazily in the first beta. However, I'm really nervous on support balance because it seems like they're trying to cater to both sides, um, and that won't work. Uh, that's how we get things that are broken, and that's how we get people that don't queue tank. Five five is gonna push more players down or up the ladder. Right as of right now, and the average is golden plat. Do you think? I think that's a I think that's a fool's take to think that the going five v five is gonna push players up or down the ladder more. The the ladder will always stabilize itself. Um, has any of your YouTube videos done way better than you thought it would? Um, and an unexpected flop videos that you thought would do well. Oh, that's an interesting question. Has there any of your YouTube videos done way better than you thought? Uh, and had any unexpected flop videos? Um, let's, uh, let's just, let's just put it out there, shall we? This was the video that did way better than I expected. Sorry, not this video, the whole series. Um, the whole series was insanely polarizing. I don't know why. And I still don't understand why. People just love it. People loved it more than anything. And I used to love this series, like, more than anything. Um, but people kind of ruined it for me in a lot of ways. Um, so I don't have the same love for it as I used to. I still enjoy doing it every once in a while, but I'm in this endless cycle that if I don't do it for a long period of time, then people get upset and they come and they complain to me and they get worse. But if I do it too often, then I don't enjoy myself. So it's like, it's almost impossible to win, if that makes sense. Um, but any videos that flopped that I thought would do really well, um... So this is actually, God, and I hate to say it, I don't want to, like, call the guy out. Um, but I'm just gonna say it. So I have an editor named Cuber. Uh, Cuber has made the amazing videos, like, um, Flats Ventures and stuff like that. And this guy is probably one of the most talented people I've ever seen, especially in editing. And he does stuff for me, does stuff for Emong, does stuff for, for Fitzy. Fitzy was actually the person who recommended him to me. And I feel so bad because I give him the impossible Herculean task of like kind of stream recaps where it's not like a single game. It's like a whole stream crunched down to one video. And it's a lot harder to push and market. And his videos like typically don't do nearly as good as I think they should. And I need to find a better way to let people know that these videos are fucking sick. Like Huber, Huber is insanely fucking talented. Uh, and I wish I could push his stuff better, but yeah, that'd probably be my one that I thought was Insanely underrated and does like doesn't do as well as I thought it would And then also the one that was a lot lot bigger I love your content by the way since you've had all these burning questions Why don't I ask you how your life's been and then your day? Have you eaten anything? You gotta go get something to eat. Uh, I've eaten something. I actually had a strawberry banana smoothie this morning um, from Panera which was good. Um, but life's been okay. Um, I've been very lost in content waiting for Overwatch 2. Because I don't think there's a game that quite scratches the itch for me like Overwatch does. Uh, and I'm basically just kind of in a waiting period. And I'm not going to lie, waiting sucks. What abilities do you like to see in the future? What ability do you think is the most underrated and kind of in Overwatch? Uh, I'm not going to do speculations on, new on future stuff. Uh, but my favorite and current Overwatch... Uh, would probably be like Winston Jump or like Diva Boosters. Very, very, very like like it's not that like crazy uh, of an idea, but it's n cool, um, cool movement, and I enjoy it. Uh, I've been a console player my entire lifespan of Overwatch, but I got to Overwatch and finally moved to PC. Got Roman money now. Nice, pog good. Uh, but I've been seeing I'm struggling playing on mouse and keyboard and trips for tips for transition. Uh, it took me about a solid year, if not closer to, to be completely comfortable on mouse and keyboard more so than I was on console. So you need to play a lot of games. Don't worry about hard grinding and doing aim trainers. You genuinely just got to play some video games. Like, that is that is how you're going to learn. Muscle memory. Hey, Fonz, given your background in R6, have you ever considered doing an Overwatch stream music controller? I've literally done, I've done actually videos of me playing on Quick Play with controllers. I'm not going to do it in Ranked because that don't make no sense. Uh, Yo, Flats, can you tell us if you have any pets you've had in your life? And if so, I had fish when I was little. Um, I had beta fish, and uh, the best story of that is uh, they were kept in a tank like this with a divider down the middle. One here, one there, one blue, one red. 
And one day when I was at school, my parents were at work. They bought and bopped the, the top of the tank off of it. And then one jumped in the other one and they, kill, and they, they killed each other. And then I also had parakeets uh, who I had for a few years. And then they lived with my grandparents for like eight more years. They, they lived for like 12, 15 years. It was crazy. Um, they were cool. My dad loved them a lot. Sorry, you probably answered before, but where did the name Flats come from? Uh, was that random? Just some different gamer tag at different points. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much into like old gamer tags because I honestly don't even remember half of them. Of course, everybody had those like XX Snipe Down Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 names. Like everyone had those embarrassing ones. I don't even remember what mine was. I think I was part of some XXX clan at some point. Uh, but how did I get the name Flats? Um, when I went into high school, I went to a private high school. My grandparents took me out of public school because I was kind of going down a bad path. To be honest, it, it was the right call. Uh, but anyways, I went to try out for football and went to freshman football. And this is one kid that was just like kind of dominating. Like everyone knew him from like Pop Warner or whatever. Uh, but anyways, eventually um, we ended up doing Oklahoma's, which is like one-on-one drills. And this kid was kind of like just shitting on everybody. And then I had a one-on-one -on -one against him. And he was very short. His name was unironically Frank the Tank. And he was like very good at getting up underneath you, like under your leverage. But I was a lot bigger and a lot stronger than most people my age. So even though he had good leverage, I just had more weight and power coming down. So to be honest with you, he kind of like lost his like, I wouldn't say lost his footing, but like he lost the leverage battle. And I just came like came down on top of him. And so in football, when you block someone on the ground, it's called a pancake block. Pancakes are flat. My last name is Flaherty. So people like kind of shortened it right away. And they told the story at uh, my Spanish, or they told the story like when we got into school with my Spanish teacher at the time, my freshman Spanish teacher at the time. And the, he was like, wait, Flats, I'm gonna call you Flats. And I was like, I mean, I don't mind it. And then from that day on, everyone in the whole school called me Flats and I had that name all through high school, all through college. I ended up getting the gamer tag for it. And uh, yeah, I, I've had it ever since, so. How are you such a sweet person? What helps you stay positive? Uh, I am not someone who's always positive. Uh, actually, when I was very early into my streaming career, how do I describe this to you? There's a lot of people that believe in toxic positivity, where if you're not positive, then you're a piece of shit and like you should go fuck yourself. Uh, I think that's one of the most dog shit things on the planet. When I'm positive or good to people, it's because the situation is good and I want it to be good and I will always try to do right by you. Um, but I also don't think that everything is sunshine and rainbows and fucking rainbows coming out of everyone's ass. Like, sometimes situations suck, or people suck, or things suck. And there's nothing wrong with expressing disdain for those things. Uh, and I remember very early on, uh, there was, like, certain times where I either got, like, upset with, like, you know, how people were being in chat, or being to a friend, or how the game was going, or whatever. I wasn't, like, yelling at my teammates going, like, go oh, yourself, you're fucking dog shit, you fucking piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. Um, but people would turn it on me, and they're like, wow, I thought you were wholesome, I thought you were positive. Wow. You really fucking changed, huh? But yeah, I, I had this disdain of people that were, like, always saying, like, oh, you should be more wholesome, or like, oh, smile. There's actually a command in my chat now that's command smile, and uh, I'm pretty sure... Uh, try, I think you're somewhere in the shadows, right? Like, that that was literally, like, a command we came up with, like, from what someone said. Because people kind of would come in and we would actually say that, like, unironically. I wouldn't say I'm always positive. Uh, I'm very realistic, and I always try to look at things in a good light, but not always can it be that case. Uh, got any plans to go to the cons or any other events? Not at the time. Uh, maybe we'll rush League Finals, I don't know. What was the best pizza you ever ate? Uh, there's a place in Stoughton, Massachusetts called, um, um... Town Spa. It's called Town Spa. Sorry. Town Spa. It's a cash-only business. Uh, they sar serve little bar pizzas. They're kind of expensive. Fucking fire, though. Out of all the top main tank players now, who do you think you would go up against in a match the most? I really don't care about these kinds of questions. No offense. Like, I play against the top players in ranked all the time. Like, sometimes I'll get a team of literally pros and then me, and they have a bunch of Masters players and then them, and it's like... It's all fun and good for content, but I know I'm not better than them. Like, they have scrim time, they have all this other stuff. It's actually kind of like the super thing. Actually, yo, crap, do you have the clip? Who's better, super or flats on Rhine? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm better. With full confidence, I would say that. Now, that's not me trying to be mean. 
towards flats. I'm just saying that um, my experience um, versus his experience, you can't compare. Dude, do you think I think I'm better than Super? Do you think I'm better than someone who's been playing in a rush league for years? Like, uh, it's different levels of skill. It's different levels of practice. Um, so I don't have like, oh, I wish I could go up against this person. I really don't care. Who inspired you to start a YouTube channel and who was the motivation to start? Um, no one inspired me. I was already a content creator streaming. Um, actually, Retro, who's my channel manager, my original editor, um, he made like one or two videos for me way back when. Um, he's actually embarrassed of them, of them now, which is hilarious. But I thought to him, I said to him, I said, I think you have good talent. Like, you know, I'd love for you to make videos for me more often, but I don't really have much money. I didn't have much money at the time. I had no dis disposable income. I was bare, like, I was, I was like, n like just barely getting to the streaming point where I could pay my bills, right? And I wanted him to do my YouTube and he wanted to do it too. And I told him, I was like, look, I don't really get the money to pay you yet. But if we make this shit work, I got you, you got me, we, we do this shit. He was like, all right, I'm down. It made like a one video a week for a little bit. They started, they started catching, like getting traction. They started doing okay. I luckily had the channel monetized because I had done like some coaching content beforehand. So, and monetization was easier to get at the time. And so we made a few bucks on it and I was like, I can pay you. Like not much, but I can pay you. So I was pay I paid him like $15 a video for like a few videos. It wasn't much. I wasn't proud of it, but it was like he was learning how to edit it and I was getting videos out of it. And then before you knew it, within like two months, it was like starting to become an actual operation. And then how long was it retro? Was it like three or four months later after we first started it? I think you quit your job and went full time editing and you've been with me ever since. So. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it wasn't like any motivation, I guess it was just like, you know, I wanted to make more YouTube content. And uh, I was already streaming, so. Do you think the base of Overwatch 2 will bring in more opportunities for smaller up-and-coming streamers and content creators? If that does, do you think it'd be a good way to, to grow? Uh, I think you're absolutely fooling yourself if you think that you need to be waiting for Overwatch 2 to grow as a streamer. Uh, if anything, right now is technically the best time. I can think of five people off the top. Actually, I can think of ten people off the top of my head that have made streaming careers out of themselves in the last four months. Um... A lot of people always like ask like questions. And I think there's going to be a question in here somewhere later because I think I saw someone asked about it. But um, streaming, especially early, is much more about marketing yourself than actually hard grinding content. People, they really, really emphasize that you need to hard grind. You need to put 12 hours a day in and, and, and hardcore go after it. Sure, I put in long days. I do four to six hours of stream. And then I do a couple hours of YouTube later, like or whether it's content strategy, marketing strategy, like expanding to TikTok, uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, multiple YouTube channels, whatever it is, like looking forward. Sure. But it's more of thinking it's more of working smarter, not harder content wise and, and working on making those good moments from your content reach more people, whether it's clips channels like New Punter and Fresh Nuts, whether it's TikToks, whether it's YouTube whether it's uh, Twitter, whether it's Instagram, there's so much fucking shit. You should focus on that instead of hard grinding. Uh, I'm curious if anything, are you gonna miss about Overwatch One? I'm gonna miss Duo with Email Gun Tank. I won't lie, I am, gonna, I am gonna miss that. I'll miss it a lot. How do you deal with burnout as a content creator? Um, I don't know if I've had a burnout. I've more of lost motivation. But that's because I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. Like, I feel like as long as I'm a p accomplishing things, I'm always moving forward. Uh, but I also have good habits on disconnecting and I don't push myself too hard. If I don't feel like streaming, I stop my stream. It's one of the, it's actually one of the things I always tell like people that start streaming is you should make a schedule for yourself and always hold to it. So like if you're saying, okay, I'm gonna stream three days a week, stream those three days a week, even if it's only for a few minutes. Even if you only stream for 30 minutes and you're like, you know what? I'm not feeling it today. I'm out. Well, guess what? You accomplished something. You accomplished a stream for that day. You went as far as you could. You didn't push yourself much further than you needed to. Good job. And then rewarding yourself for it. Uh, should they bring back hero bands in the ranked in Overwatch League? No, we didn't get hero bands. We had hero pools. They were dog shit. Uh, has getting good at Overwatch made you better at other competitive games? Uh, I would say technically yes, uh, because my mechanical skill is caught up a little bit more, but I was an exceptional uh, FPS player on console back in the day. So I'm assuming that because I got better at mouse and keyboard, it's kind of the same situation. 
What are some of your hobbies outside of streaming life? Watch a lot of anime, love cars. I used to love sports a lot more, not as much as I do now. I love trying new foods. I like trying new things. Um, I kind of wish I had more people to kind of like explore and go places with uh, because I'd love to take more trips to like New Hampshire, Maine, Connecticut, Rhode Island, stuff like that, and kind of like see new shit. Um, because if I was like a multi-millionaire, I would totally buy like a nicer, bigger truck. And I would totally just go driving around, like go to new places, try new foods, see new things, like, you know, just like whatever. Um, I would totally probably do a lot of that stuff, but that's for future. What's the worst part about being a streamer? What is the best and worst part of being a streamer? All right, this is one of those, those are one of those questions that's so loaded. It's such a loaded question because how do you say this? How do you say the goods, the bads without the goods, without also sounding like an asshat? Because the bads include things like uh, people having absolutely no idea of self-awareness and forcing themselves onto you. Um, whether they just start DMing you at four in the morning and start spamming you out. Uh, basically like, oh, oh, what are you doing? Like, fucking stream now. Uh, watch, watch my, spectate my bronze right now. Like, dude, it's 4 a.m. Go f*** yourself, dude. Like, you like, just, and like, you don't even know who these people are. They're literally just coming out of the woodwork. And it's like, you've never even spoken to them in your whole life. And they think they know everything about you. You know, people that probably hate me, that think they know all about me, probably think I'm a terrible person, probably think that, you know, they saw one clip of something from a year ago, which was clipped out of context. And they were like, look it, look it here. See, he's a bad person. He's. He's bad. Look at this. Look at this right here. It, it, you know, he, he, he says he's a good person, but it's... Dude, like, okay, man. Sure, dude. Like, you're just... You fucking sit online all day long waiting for a moment where you can finally bring this up. Like, please stop. Like, I'm sure there's tons of people out there that are preying on every creator's downfall. Like, have you ever noticed whenever a creator has a moment where something isn't that good, like, people jump in and they want to, like, throw all their evidence of, oh, look, at he yelled at me in a ranked game three and a half years ago. Okay, dude. Um, that's probably the big bad. Um, the good though, I would say there's way more good than bad. Uh, I think the good is like the people you meet. Um, for those who don't know, I kind of got my first big break streaming because of J3. Now I mean with Jay all the time, but the reason I can mean with Jay is because the man's got so much confidence. Like I can call him bald and short or whatever the fuck, which I don't do that often. Um, but you know, I can joke around with him because he's very confident in who he is and what he does. But like Jay host Jay and me played together, so it was actually Valorant came out and everyone went to Valorant, and I was playing grinding Overwatch when COVID started, and people Jay and like people needed like people to play with, so I played with Jay. Jay wanted to ask me to duo, and after like we duoed like two or three days in a row, and then on like the third day he was like, "You stream?" and I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Why didn't you tell me?" and I was like, "Uh, I didn't want to be like a leech." So he hosted me after his stream, and I went from being like a 20 viewer Andy to like a 50 viewer Andy almost overnight. And then very quickly after that, 50 to 60 to a 70, and then 100. And then I got stuck around 100 for a little bit. Um, but it basically gave me my jump start into streaming, you know? Uh, and then I met Emong, obviously, and I've met so many other people. Like, I've met so many people through streaming, whether it's like in my own little streaming universe, which is like you guys from chat, mods, retro, editors like Cuber. And on a random or Kai, you know, to like Twitter mutuals to people that like me, I haven't only got to meet a few times. You meet a lot of fucking great, great, cool people. And I've learned so much from so many of those people. And I, I that's genuinely what I, what I feel like I am as a pe person is a collection of other people. Like basically I spend, and I, even in my off time, when I watch like YouTube videos and stuff, I'm like a big person who either watches like Pokemon videos or I watch like historical shit. And I like learn about like, you know, uh, like why why do like certain conflicts happen in the world or you know why do certain countries act certain ways or like you know I'll, I'll like collections of like tons of different shit you know um, it's basically just kind of who I am and I, and I enjoy that a lot with streaming as well because I meet a lot of people I learn their perspectives on things and I like to add it to my own anyways though sorry uh how does one make better callouts as a tech? I feel my communication is lacking. I want it to do better. The only tip I'm going to give you is urgency. Uh, not everything like like you listen to pro comms and you're like bring, 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 run, 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 run. that doesn't do anything. Like you can be like, oh, let's go right here, right here, right here, right here, and then it's like if something midway through the fight comes up and it's urgent, you're like oh, like uh, bring, 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 bring. and then you can sw you swap to that really quick. Like you're like oh shit, break, 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 like really fast, and you change your inflection, you change your your tone, it it increases your level. 
of urgency to them. Because if you're always urgent, there's nowhere to go. It's the same thing with being mad. If you're someone who's mad all the time and someone who gets and yells at people all the time, when you're actually mad, there's going to be nowhere to go. Uh, you promised us a rugby story during your first YouTube stream. Can you share that now? Um, this is, if there's anything that's going to get me demonetized, it's probably this one. So, for those who don't know, I played rugby in high school. And, um... Uh, I went to an all-boys school. And our rule when we played co-ed schools was that the girls couldn't play against us. The reason that being was, like, they were afraid that the boys would be afraid of hurting the girls. And so, teams, we would only play them if they agreed. So, we are playing some school, and, um... It was like towards the end of the game, they ended up putting this girl in who was like one of their better players and they weren't supposed to. And you have scrum caps on, which are basically like old style football helmets where they're like leather, but instead they're like mesh. They don't really do a whole lot. Just instead of hitting your head against someone else's, you hit mesh, then hit their head. Uh, anyways, though, I have this crazy photo where there's like six people trying to tackle me and because we're really close to scoring. It was going to win us the game. Like we, if we score, we win the game. If we get a try, we win the game. And she went to, like, tackle my knees or something, and I fucking need her in the head. Like, like I couldn't tell because there's so many people around me, but I was just chugging, like, legs pumping. And she went down. I just felt the boop. I felt the pop. You know, when you hit someone, in, like, when you hit someone, you feel, like, like, the reaction. So, like, I took, like, another, like, four, five, six steps and fell. We ended up scoring. Um, but I remember we were getting on the bus to leave, and there was an ambulance that had shown up. And there was, like, someone getting put in the ambulance and I was like huh whatever, whatever, whatever was that was um and I was like ah oh, shit I feel so bad but then I found out when we got back to school and we were practicing like a day later that we were not going to face that school again because apparently they put girls in and one of them got severely hurt and I put two and two together and so the what the girl they put in was the girl that I had need uh during that push and uh she went to the hospital for it i felt terrible i actually felt so bad uh what's your first experience with gaming uh either game boy color or playstation one uh what do you think makes a good teammate what makes the worst teammate you ever experienced the worst teammates are the ones that just like type the whole game never say anything blame everyone for everything on the planet good teammates are positive try to make comms um don't engage with people that are like being angry towards them, uh, but don't like don't like high road them. They just like try. They try to give an effort, and if it doesn't work out, they don't get upset. Why a Honda Ridgeline? Because uh, I was at the dealership that day because I had to take my CRV for maintenance, and they were telling me that the CRV was not doing too hot. And I was already looking around the lot, and I saw this 2020 Ridgeline with 12 miles on it. And I asked them to take it for a test drive. They gave me for a test drive. Uh, it was listed at 38,500. I got it down to thirty thousand. Um, bought it at thirty thousand, and uh, truck's worth more now than when I bought it for by a pretty significant amount. So that's pretty much why. Uh, Proudest play is Reinhardt since you started streaming. Can I? Can I? Can I choose? Can I choose an audible on this? Can I choose an audible? Retro. Can you find the clip from Scrims? <laughs> Scrims. Uh oh, listen. This is a, a long time ago. This is so long ago, okay? There is a clip that exists, and it was probably one of the first moments I realized, man, I should not be doing this whole path to pro trying to be like an actual pro player. I should make fucking content. This is quite possibly one of the best clips of all time, chat. This is goats. This is goats. Uh, the only difference was they played floats for first point and rolled through second, so they got to third. This is old. Going on the right. Holy shit. Oh, we're going in, we're going in. Yeah, give it this, give it this, give it this. Come on! It's coming down! <laughs> oh my god! Help me! <laughs> Freak, freak, freak. That was the stupidest thing I've ever done. Wait, baby's right side. <laughs> I never really got to share this with you guys very much. Um, 
but I, I am still the exact same playstyle player, pinning in, going deep. And uh, man, I'm not gonna lie. That was probably, th that was the moment I realized, man, I am, I am doing the wrong thing, dude. I am doing the wrong thing. What does a typical streaming day look like? Schedule-wise, eating habits, wind down, and sleep schedule. Sure, so I wake up, shit, shower. Uh, I try to go for a walk in the morning if I can. Then go to Panera, grab a, a, a water and a strawberry vanilla smoothie. Sometimes that doesn't work out and I just get breakfast at home. Start stream slash if I have something more pressing, I do earlier. Stream for a few hours, get done with stream, either order dinner or start dinner, make dinner at home, make dinner, whatever. Then I chill for like an hour or two, typically. Um, then nighttime is very much either marketing strategy for YouTube slash TikTok slash like getting updates of like how the week has been from like the team from like, you know, from an editing perspective, is there anything we need to improve on anything that's like not doing that well? I'm very, very hands on. Um, in a lot of ways, but I'm also very hands off. Like, I let them do what they got to do. Like, I let Retro and everyone else from the YouTube side do what they got to do during the week. But then at the end of the week, they kind of like come back, and I'm like, okay, like let's do this for next week, or try to make this better, or you know, like whatever it might be. Um, then nighttime, I watch the Man of Man go to sleep. Uh, if you could make a streamer dream team in Overwatch 2, and you're part of the team, what would you guys play in only one composition? Would you play that comp? Uh, I'd make a streamer dream team. I don't know. I'm probably doing me on Ryan, ML on Bap slash Ana. Uh, I'm probably putting J on either Cast Tracer. Uh, I, I fuck. It'd be tough. It depends on like what maps and what whatnot. Because like Want would be good in some places. Fitzy would be really good for the May in certain places. Um, and then for the support, either I'd probably either do like Frogger or or SK for that Lucio. Um, but always, you can not gonna always run Lucio, so it's gonna be tough. What is the most memorable moment in your streaming career? I don't have like a single one that sticks out to me. Uh, I mean, we just had one like a few minutes ago, like like literally an hour ago with like, so I'm sure because this is going to be a different video or a different like thing that gets put out eventually. Um, but like this will probably be the PO box opening, but like this is literally custom made and was sent to me. This is like one of those, mo this is going to be one of those core moments for, for streaming. Um, but I don't know if I have like a, an actual like one moment that steps six out, you know, like when I got partnered was on Twitch was a big one When I hit 100k on YouTube was a big one when I got signed to mayhem. That was a big one um, The brig event the brig gifties event um, Which was absolutely insane um, Literally life-changing got me out of like literally crippling debt um, I hope they do them again. I really do I, even though people really hated them uh, a lot of people won't tell you that a lot of other creators that were very quiet about it, because why would they jump in the crossfire? Um, basically saved their asses in this time of lull Overwatch where their streams had shrunk. And I'm talking like mid to smaller creators who were struggling and it saved their asses. And that's not the part that people want to talk about. They want to talk about only the the bigger streamers getting gifted subs or whatever, and it's like, oh, I, fuck this event, this event sucks ass, and it's like, dude, that literally saved people's lives, like, everyone's on the same team and wants the best for the game and, and, and for content and all that stuff, and it's like, just because you see a creator or creators get something, you shouldn't be vengeful of them because of that, like, this is also their job and their daily life, you know, and it's like, it's deeper than that, it's not just at the... F it's not just at the forefront. It's like, oh, they're trying to farm money. It's like, dude, it's really not like that. Like, of course, it's their job. Like, dude, what do you go to work for every day? You know, like, that's a tougher conversation, though, to be honest with you. Uh, what was Overwatch for you when you first bought it? Do you expect to have a huge career and become a YouTuber and a loyal fan base and level fan base? Uh, no, I actually hated it. Um, <laughs> how we've come full circle. Um, so a lot of my friends actually were super into Overwatch. And I was the one that wasn't. So I placed like gold or some shit. And um, I play with them. We lose sometimes or whatever. And eventually I fell down to like 1700 plat. And I had two friends that were diamond. And my friends didn't play with me. They played with them. They were like, oh, like we're not going to, you know, you're a little too low. You're going to have to climb up a little bit so we can play. So I got kind of annoyed because I had a bit of an ego, especially being a professional player for Siege. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to climb on this game. And I hopped on and Ironclad Bastion had just released. And I was like, I'm gonna do that. And I went from 1700 to 3K in a week. Um, and I caught up and I was like, pretty much leading the pack in SR at that point. 
I was like, yeah, what's up now, bitch? <laughs> you know? Um, and then I ended up playing with some of my, those two friends up until, like, Masters, and then one of them dropped out, and then one, the other one we played up until uh, to GM. Not bashing, playing, like, Soldier Cassidy, you know, Season 2, Season 3 meta. Um, but, yeah, I, I actually hated Overwatch when I first played it, and then I grew to love it over time. So, what's your favorite type of music? I don't have, like, a one favorite. Uh, I do like Country in the Car in the Summer, um, but... Honestly, I'm not picky. I kind of just hit random shit. What's your favorite Emong story? Uh, that's a tough one. God, I have so many at this point, whether on stream or off stream. Um, I mean, the cake baking stream was funny as shit. Also, I just realized I just opened up all the loot boxes. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was going to take a little longer than that, but oh well. Um... You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Now. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do the more wholesome route just for this one. Um, but for those who don't know, Iwang was basically for a long time almost like a mentor and like taught me a lot of things. Right? Uh, it was like a mentor in a lot of ways and taught me um, a better way of engaging with people. Um, and sometimes learning to pick battles where, you know, because like obviously he didn't tell me like not to pick fights or like not to pick battles, but like sometimes. I realized I was, like, shutting into the void in some ways. Like, you're not going to win Twitter battles. Like, people just sit there and get mad all day long. It's like, you know, like, they're, they're there with that intent. Like, it's not really worth your energy. Um, but taught me a lot of, like, looking at the good because it's inherently human nature. Um, for, like, let's say even on a video, right? Let's say there's a hundred comments all, like, we love this. Like, this is a great piece of content. We loved your stuff, whatever. And then there's one that's like, holy shit, you're so fucking dog shit. Your content's gone downhill. You're fucking trash. Uh, your just stuff is lazy. I don't even know why people watch it. Whatever. You will inherently zoom in on that one. That's the one you'll focus on. And I know many of creators who have literally been destroyed by this type of stuff. And um, learning to not do that is very tough. I'm not perfect with it, but I've gotten a lot better. You know, a million times better than I once was. And I think Iwang had a big part to do with that because he taught me a lot of like seeing the better side of it, you know, and not not engaging, I guess, with the bad side of it because there's no point. So I think it's, I don't know if it's an actual moment, but it's more of like uh, an overarching theme, I guess. Uh, do you use hotkeys for stream or do you manually search them on OBS? I'll show you. Uh, I have a stream deck. And so this is what my stream deck looks like. And so, as you can see, there's this button right here for win. And then you'll see down here it pops up and it adds a win here. And on my Overwatch scene, you'll see there's a win now in the top left-hand corner. Um, I have buttons for all of those. I have a stream marker button, which is very important. This is how content is marked for editors and whatnot. I have the add button, which I will nuke you guys if I feel like it. Uh, cameras on and off. Audios for Discord whatnot. Sub-only chat, just in case there's like you know, bot raids or whatever. OBS preview, because um, for those who don't know, if you have preview on for OBS, uh, that's technically another video that's running, so it can uh, like can eat your FPS slightly. Um, yeah, how hard was it set up the stream deck? Uh, Crap is actually the one who set this part up. Um, this part was a little bit more complicated, but everything else uh, wasn't too bad. Wasn't too, too bad. Uh, if you go to any country on the planet, where would you go? Uh, honestly, I don't want to fly for a while. It's tough to answer that question after I just got back. What are some things viewers when climbing should observe when it comes to pro slash high level gameplay? Is there any specific specifically caters to Overwatch? Oh, uh, God. How do I say this without sounding like an absolute ass hat? Um, way too many people think they understand the game, but actually don't. They just mimic things they've heard better players talk about. Like, I can't, I can't tell you how often I've had people like when I played through lower ranks tell me like, "No, don't play this character. Like, this character's not good." And it's like, dude, it's Zenyatta on Hanamura second. Hello, uh, like I can literally one tap people from Narnia, uh, <laughs> and be safe the whole time. You know, like it just people will think that they understand the game much more than they do, uh, and they genuinely don't. So that's the thing I observe. Anything you'd like to say to your mods? I appreciate my mods so, so much. Uh, they do so much for me. Crap was actually the one who put this whole list together of questions. Um, and they help keep this community safe and welcoming to people. So I appreciate them. 
Uh, what's the one thing that separates Overwatch from all other FPS games? Speed. Speed and dynamics. Uh, Valorant is so slow. CS is so slow. Apex is slow in the mid fight. It's very fast at the end, um, which is super exciting, but the mid and early game is so fucking slow. Uh, speed of Overwatch, it's almost like an ADHD dream. You're just like constantly just like boom, 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 running in, taking damage, go, boom, boom, heal up. Shit, no, it's like. <sighs> What's your favorite anime characters? Uh, favorite anime characters? I don't know. That's a good question. Well, that sounding like an absolute asshat and like super generic. Um, I loved Dragon Ball when I was a kid. Naruto was amazing. More, I, I, I feel like I don't know. Are you asking like like good stories? Are we asking like waifus? I'm not even sure what. Like, I feel like there's like a lot. That's a loaded question. Um, so I'm gonna keep it simple. Uh, since you watch anime, maybe an anime tier list. Uh, that probably would be World War Four. What's your biggest concern for the future of Overwatch? Uh, the community, genuinely. I've already started to see small signs of the community kind of tearing itself apart. Uh, almost anyone that I feel has a slight advantage over them, or anyone that's slightly above them. For example, uh, I think the Brig event was a good example, um, where creators had an amazing event where they got to have a better likelihood livelihood after so much of a drought. Uh, it's not like anyone made millions on that type of thing. No one, no one made even close to that, you know? And then I think the same stuff's kind of happening with the, the leaks that's kind of happening. And um, I'm really scared that Overwatch turns into Apex, where in Apex, the casuals hate the pros and the content creators more than anybody else on the planet. And they genuinely believe they're destroying the game, even though the game is now currently at the highest amount of players it's ever had, period. Um, what are the three things you can buy at the grocery store to make the cashier make you look at, give you weird looks? What the fuck is a kink kit? I'm not gonna answer that question. Do you believe the younger self would be proud of where you have accomplished and where you are today? Maybe, uh, possibly. Uh, I did like to uh, play a lot of video games when I was younger and people used to meme me for it because uh, I had this inherent talent uh, where I could manually change my blood pressure. Um, I don't know if I still could do it. Maybe I could, but it would be kind of weird and risky to do it by myself right now. Um, but I used to be able to raise it or lower it at will. Uh, yeah, no, I'm dead serious. Uh, and I had multiple doctors and nurses and stuff look at me for it. And they were like, you can't do that. And I was like, watch me. <laughs> and they, I actually did it. They were like, oh my God. Um, how? Don't know. Can't describe it to you. But it was just like almost this feeling that like there's something inside me that I can well up and pressurize. I could set it to like really unhealthy levels. So what I used to do is I would go to the bathroom and just like sit there and just like close my eyes and wait and I would just force it up and then I'd walk over to the nurse's office and I go yeah I'm not too feeling too good and you sit down and they're like they take your temperature they do your blood pressure <gasps> oh my god you're like and I, you know and like I she I had to go lay down and you know I have to like I literally get to take a nap in the nurse's office for like an hour and uh I went home my senior year about 35 times um it didn't count as missing school because I got dismissed but it was come it was becoming a bit of a problem because they kind of knew what I was doing, but they couldn't prove it. The only person who knew was my dad, and my dad wouldn't snitch. He refused to snitch. He was the only person who knew. What he would do, because he was getting kind of annoyed of having to pick me up, so he wouldn't pick me up because I had a car. So what he would do is he'd drive up to the front door, I'd get in his Jeep, we'd drive down the block, turn around, go to the parking lot, and I'd hop out, get in my car, and drive home. Yeah, but he would ask me, he's like, did you do it again? I'm like, yep. And then uh, my math teacher actually caught on and like it became like a whole meme with some of my uh, my teachers at the time uh, because you couldn't stop me. It was impossible. I remember one day, one day they kept me in the, in the nurse's office for an extended period of time. They kept me in there for two and a half hours before they sent me home. And every time like she was like, well, I think you're good enough to go back to class. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, maybe I should wait like five more minutes just to be sure. Like I was like, can I go for like a little walk and come back? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd go walk down the hall, fucking just pressurize, walk back in, sit down. I'm like, I'm actually not feeling that great after that walk. And then she'd take it again, and she was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> you know, like, nobody could prove it, though. Because even if you watched me walk down the hall, I didn't go anywhere. It's not like I was sitting there, like, running in place or whatever. I was literally, like, like very slowly walking as I did it, you know? So I, I don't know how to describe it to you, but I remember... Uh, it was back in when I had a pediatrician, so I had a pediatrician until I was like 19 or whatever. And I had this nurse, and I was like, I just have a question for you. I was like, have you ever met someone that can like 
literally raise their blood pressure and lower it as well. She's like, that's not a thing. And I was like, yes, it is. Like, I can do it. And she was like, all right. And like, she like kind of dismissed me as she was like putting it on. And I was like, I mean, I can do it right now if you want. And she was like, no, no, what's not like, don't do anything. And I was like, she's not believing me. So I literally sat there as they were putting like the pressure thing on, they're pumping it up and started doing it. That must have like really scared them because like, you know, they like check your heart rate and whatnot. And they're like pumping it up. And like, it was, it was going up very quickly as they were like checking it. So she took it off and was like, I'm going to redo it. And I was like, I'm telling you what it is. And so she checked it again and it was really, 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 really high. And she's like, are you feeling okay? And I was like, I told you, I just did that. And she was like, now lower it. And I was like, okay. And I like waited like a minute or so. And I was like, all right, now check. And she checked you. She's like, I've never met someone that can do that before. I was like, I don't know. Can't explain it. Can anyone get good at games or are some people naturally better than others? Obviously someone can improve, but is there a limit to how much someone can improve? Uh, no, I was, anyone can get good. Uh, anyone. Uh, there will be inherent advantages like younger kids, like especially like 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, are going to absorb knowledge like sponges and they have really very fast reflexes because they're young, they're kids. Um, if you're, especially if you're in the older, like t late 20s into 30s, your reaction time is slower and you have a heart, your brain has a harder time retaining information in the same way. Uh, but practice and time will always make up for it. You just might need more practice or more time than someone else does. If you were on the Overwatch list, Blizzard, Blizzard marketing team, what would you be doing differently even? Uh, what do you think they've done well in the team that surprised you? Well, obviously I can't say a whole lot, but um, I think people are way overreacting. They're not seeing enough marketing. Like everyone's everyone's big thing is like, there's not enough marketing. There's not enough marketing. The marketing. Like, dude, Apex dropped with a two day notice. Like Apex literally went, hey, yo, game tomorrow. See you there. And then the game fucking popped off, you know, like, I think, I think long marketing campaigns of the past are over. Like we live in the age of TikTok where everyone has like this very short attention span and they don't really care about things for longer than a few days, you know? So I actually don't think it's that bad. Um, but I think Overwatch is going to have a huge boom and then it's going to fall off really hard and it's going to have to earn people's trust back because unfortunately that first beta really, really, really didn't sit well with people. It's not going to have the PVE. You know, people have already started to spread all this leak stuff from the battle pass, like, which is why I said to wait, because I want to wait to hear all the information. I don't want to just be react Andy and rage at like some small leak, which we don't even know what's, tr what's true and what's not true. Point being, it's going to have to slowly gain people's trust back over time. That's my long term thing. But uh, up till Overwatch 2 marketing, I actually don't think we're in trouble. I actually think it's fine. Uh, best meta that's ever existed in the game, in your opinion, um, the season nine meta, which was slightly at the end of dive where dive was still very good um but it was a map based meta depending on what map it was you played different comps so for like ilios well you played hog hog arissa king's row you played ryan zarya Nambani, you played winston diva for first slash second then you played ryan zarya on third it, it was it was v it was very good it was probably my favorite meta ever because you never got tired of playing certain tanks because you always got a chance to play something else on the next map and there was no double shield and there was no ball. So, it was, and the hog was like, the hog was okay. Like hog Arisa was good. How do you handle yourself as a public online public figure? Do you find yourself having to keep your private life more private or does it affect your life much more when you clock out for work? Uh, I think this kind of pertains more. I was talking about earlier is like, uh, you get parasocial Andes that are like very hardcore, like against you or for you. Um, and they kind of like, literally try to either a crawl on your crawl under your skin or b light you on fire um it depends on where you're at <laughs> i guess uh but yeah uh setting boundaries has been something that i'm very very passionate about and i always stick to and some people don't like it and some people call me a dick for it and they get really mad and then they turn into like some of my biggest haters of all time and they don't like me and i hate to use the word hater god I, I can't believe i just said that out loud i just cringed um but like genuinely they will become some of the people that hate you the most because they think they're trying to be loving and it's whatnot. It's like, whoa, back up. Like, I, I don't know you like that. Like, please, like you're basically asking like, can we go hang out at, in the bar and get drinks? And I'm like, whoa, like slow down there, killer. You know, literally. Um, what is your best advice for avoiding tilt and not letting those who affect your gameplay? Sometimes walking away, taking a few minutes uh, in between games if someone was especially a dick. Uh, don't let your last loss roll into your next loss. Who's the best mod?
fish. <laughs> Strictly because I can say fish's name slightly differently than the rest of you. Crap is crap. Chomp is chompy. Try is try. But how many of you can you say fish? Think about that. Think about that. On a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you for the new channel slash art rebranding? Oh, man. Dude, I've got some cool stuff coming. I've only got the logo done. But let me tell you, this logo is tough. It's tough. Uh, what's a piece of relationship advice you'd like to give your younger viewers? You think I'm good with relationships? Dude, I've been single for fucking like three years, dude. Um, I'm, I'm very much a... I am very much at this stage in my life a very much a work on myself type of person. I don't think I have time or any place for someone else right now. I I do way too much other shit and I enjoy my own I enjoy my own peace, my own time. Do you watch your own videos? If you do have a favorite, I love watching Keeper's videos. Keeper's videos are always a fucking blast. I, I it's like watching my content, but I didn't even see it for the first time. It's like I don't know what's coming next. It's genuinely enjoyable. Uh, what personal non-stream or game-related achievement are you most proud of? Um, I'm really proud of paying off my student loans, I'm not gonna lie. That was probably the most daunting thing, and I was told by family members, friends, everybody, that it was never gonna happen, and I made a major mistake. And I was also told that streaming wasn't gonna work out, and I needed to just find a regular job and all that stuff, and I've literally proved everyone wrong at every turn. I don't know if that's a cynical achievement or what, uh, but I'm very much someone who always relies on my own judgments and my own ideas on things. Um, and so, yeah, that's, I think that's what I'm probably the most proudest is when I say I'm going to do something and people go, You're, you know, you can't. And I go, yes, I can. Thinking back to when you first started, is there anything you would have done differently? And you think that you would have been an intricate part of the Overwatch? Wait, did you ever think you become such an intricate part of the Overwatch community? I still think of myself as a very small streamer. I know on YouTube set, it's maybe not so small anymore. What I could have done differently... I would have still had to learn the same lessons, so I don't know if I would have done anything differently. It's a hard question. I mean, obviously everyone has regrets, but I learned valuable lessons from those regrets, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm unsure how to answer. What are your most memorable lessons lesson with you learned from your friendship slash relationship with Elon? Something he taught you or from your relationship? Uh, I think I talked about it earlier. Um, but he genuinely taught me how to, like, be better with reacting to things. I don't mean like react content. I mean like um, react, like control what's in your control. Like, you know what I mean? Things are outside your control. Don't like, there's no reason to be upset about them. There's no reason to like stress about it because it's outside your control. There's nothing you can do about it. Control what you can in your own little space. Control your own reaction. Control how you react to things and control your own little bubble. But let's say like in Overwatch, let's say like things get nerfed and all of a sudden you can't play half of these heroes anymore. Instead of like being mad at the game and being mad at like, you know, about being able to play it with whatever, it's like, what's a better way to look at it? And what's the way to like, you know, instead of being upset about it, it's like, you're upset you can't play it, but like what reaction are you going to give to it? Are you going to give a constructive reaction? Are you going to give a, like a mad reaction? And how are you going to overcome it? You know? Are you going to get mad at it and stomp your feet and not play anymore? Or you're going to take this time to like learn something new or play something different, you know? I think that was probably a big a big factor. Alrighty, I got through the list. I'm going to resume the alerts. 